We are voice of prayer, bringing heaven to earth. Demonstration of the Spirit and power. Uh, let's pray over the teaching. Uh, Father, <laughs> we make this place an altar. We make this place an altar and we worship you. Uh, uh, we have the voice of triumph because we have Jesus. We have the voice of triumph because we're born again. We're born into uh, the, the kingdom of God. We've come to the family. Father, thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Uh, we make this place an altar. We tr triumph at the works of your hands. What was accomplished for us, uh, we are so thankful. We are so thankful. Uh, Father, uh, we examine ourselves, we check ourselves to make sure that we're, we're understanding what your grace is. We're understanding uh, that we have arrived in the kingdom where there's blessings and that we are, are beneficiaries uh, to that which you have for us because uh, Jesus uh, left the last will and testament to us. And so, Father, we thank you for those blessings. We thank you for the glory of the Lord in this place. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you for the um, the sons of God. Thank you, though, those who are heirs of the promise of God, those that are walking in the light of who you are. Uh, Holy Spirit, uh, where I need to be mute, cause me to be mute. Uh, you, Father, that there's resurrection power in your word, that as it goes forth, uh, things will be changed. Uh, I pray for people uh, uh, that uh, hear this, uh, the Father, that they are uh, lights unto their community, lights unto the, the workplace of where they are. Uh, but more than that, I even pray for YouTube and those who uh, have access to uh, these teachings, Father, that these people are blessed, that they would know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, thank you for YouTube. I uh, thank you, Father, that uh, they are safe and they have the mind of Christ and that the wisdom of God would be formed within them. Thank you for the glory. I uh, thank you that the glory of the Lord fills this place now. Thank you for who you are. Uh, thank you that we are changed and we're going from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the teaching tonight of no backsliders. Um, is there a falling from grace? Well, there most certainly is the possibility of falling from grace because Peter talks about it, and we're going to look at that tonight. Uh, uh, backslide, uh, those who live in the last days, the, the end days, they, they saw it uh, as Peter did uh, in that generation uh, after Jesus was crucified and resurrected. He was resurrected in power and seated at the right hand of God, and Peter wrote about it. Uh, uh, and, and so we're going to look at that tonight because uh, there's tribulation, there's chaos, so there, there's things called cancel culture and all these things, and, and we know that has to do with the, the, the generations before us who wanted to, to uh, cancel uh, Genesis 1 because of the creation, because of, the, of what God created, and then Genesis 2 was, well, was Adam and the woman because they don't want anything to do uh, with a family or anything. They want to to uh, uh, eliminate the, 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 the Adam, the, the husband, the man that should be over the family. And then, of course, they want to get rid of Genesis 3 because it talks about sin. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, no backsliders is there a falling from grace. Second Peter 3, verses 3 through 9, it says, knowing this first that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, well, where is the promise of his coming? So Jesus had died and they were already asking, you know, he hadn't been gone very long and they was wondering, well, well where is his coming? And then some didn't even recognize him when he was there. So, and so he, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Uh, people were trying to go back and do the norm after COVID-19. They tried to, to do the norm after uh, the airplanes flew into the Twin Towers in New York. Should have, should have been this awakening, a, sh a shaking, a rattling to wake up and say, you know, what's going on? No, we like doing our thing. We want routine. We want to continue doing the same thing because we enjoy uh, stroking the flesh. 
And so, uh, so they continue this. He says, from the beginning of creation, verse 5, for this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished uh, uh, being flooded with water. Now understand, they had no rain. When, the, when it flooded, they didn't know what rain was until uh, uh, Noah was told what was going to happen. And when the ark was finished and it was time to be loaded up, then the rain began. And, and so, verse 7, but the heavens, because he gives this prophetic word, this, the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. If the flood happened, and of course they don't want you to know about the flood that it happened, because that would tell you too much about ungodly men are going to die. But they don't want you to know that. Uh, they don't. They don't want you to go and discover these things. That yeah, there was a flood. Yes, there was an ark. Those things did happen. Go look at the Grand Canyon because that's what it looked like after the mess. You didn't see the beauty when it was first created. That is by a flood. Verse eight. But beloved, do not forget. This one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord doesn't change, but we also understand that if we spend time with the Lord, he can download it into our being a thousand years. In a moment of time, we can spend time with him and see into the future. We can see into eternity. Are we willing to even sit for five minutes? Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning uh, his promise, as some count slackness, but his long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So again, there was, there was the, the rain, uh, and it didn't appear till, till it was time for the flood, because before that, in uh, Genesis 2 and 6, all the, uh, the, the way that the Lord uh, ministered uh, the, was a mist that came up from the ground. When he created the garden in Genesis 2 and 6, there's this mist that came up, and he watered the plants himself. He had his own irrigation system. He had it all like a terrarium and a dome over it, and it would just miss from, from, the, from bottom up. They, they, they didn't need, require rain. And so when the flood occurred, God caused water to come from all different directions. We have uh, people who live on either side of us. Uh, the ones to the south uh, had to, a couple of years ago, to replace their floor in their kitchen and their family room because the, the, the table of water here is really high. But we sit on a hill right here between these two houses. You can see it. Any place you come, especially from the golf course coming this way, you can certainly see we're on a hill. And so with these people... Uh, to the north and south of us can have issues with water getting into their crawl space because that table of water. And so God has water. He has the, re the reservoir. He has what he requires. And so he can cause water from many, many directions to take out an evil population. He did during the flood. Peter wrote that things of, uh, of people continued as normal after uh, Jesus went into heaven, yet uh, this writing he completed in these first and second Peter was in 64 AD, and destruction came to Jerusalem in 70 AD. Peter gave uh, this warning uh, when he wrote these that, uh, that God has given discernment to the times and seasons of which we live. Uh, people desire to live and continue their ways. Uh, and even though they were regarding that there were things and prophetic words given, they're still co continuing to want to do their thing. They want to be my, me, myself, and I. But again, this has to be with church. He's talking to the church people. Uh, chaos was a normal in the world, especially for Jerusalem falling apart. One noted teacher and a writer for the Bereans, uh, this written by, he regarded it as a powder keg at that time. The Christians were being blamed for the trouble inside it in Rome. In the writings of the New Testament, they saw that the church was going to sleep. Uh, so uh, they, they weren't waking up. Uh, the, the people were wanting to do whatever, even though it was considered to be the last days. Well, if it was the last days then, it's the last days now. 
because Jesus is returning and you can see all of the signs of the, the, the frequency of, of earth tremors and earthquakes and the, the, the weather changes. I mean, uh, in Louisiana, most of the places like, uh, uh, what is that, St. Charles, it's underwater. The whole town's underwater. Most of Louisiana is underwater, There's the, specifically the southern part, some of Mississippi or anybody, is anybody paying attention? Oh yeah, they won't talk about that because they're talking about COVID. That's right, they won't, they won't talk about stuff where it's flooding and can kill you in a moment, but they're gonna tell you something that, that you shouldn't be concerned about. But this, uh, this is occurring in this nation and around the world. There's excitement, there's turmoil. Uh, would we not want to press into the gospel, the kingdom of God that has come, this grace of, of God? As uh, the Thessalonians, uh, are we just waiting, uh, uh, waiting for this to pass, waiting, just sitting and like hoping it'll just, you know, transpire and, and not say anything, not do anything. But the gospel, the kingdom is to go out into all the world. These people walked uh, after their desires. They walked after their own lust and then they were going to get in a mess. They're normal was what they wanted and not God's normal. Uh, is there a falling from grace? Peter warned of this and we're reading about it. Yes, for the believer. You can read it in some of the letters to the editors. They're, they're already changing what God said. They're, they're trying to get rid of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 and Genesis 3. In 2 Peter 3 and 10, uh, verse uh, 10, uh, this is the New King James Version, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt, uh, melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Verse 11, therefore, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what matter persons are we to be in holy conduct and godliness? looking for the hastening, looking for and ha the hastening of the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire and the elements will melt with this fervent heat. You don't, you don't want to be living there. Nevertheless, we, according to his promises, look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Uh, verse 14, therefore, uh, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found uh, in him in peace with, without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering our Lord is salvation, that long uh, suffering. He's long suffering. This, this grace, he was long suffering because God wanted a family and, and his son, his only son, died on the cross, was crucified, dead and buried, and he was resurrected in power. Consider that. And then he says, uh, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. Again, these same things Paul has written. He says, as also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things, which are, are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know these things beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness being led away with the air of the wicked. Verse 18, but grow in grace. But grow in grace. And then he continues, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be uh, glory both now and forever. Amen. Unstable, they twist to their own destruction uh, as teaching abortion is right. I mean, there's a guy that was elected to Congress that's from Georgia, uh, his church. They've been saying that it's okay. Paul's doctrine of grace had been perverted by untaught and unstable persons. Uh, Paul warned to not give away to false teaching of Scripture. And so here too, Peter's giving this warning. He's talking about what Paul also wrote, uh, wrote about, how important this is that we be warned, don't fall into this, don't go into error and chase after it. So he's given this warning, uh, you and I are to study, that we will recognize any twisting of scriptures. We grow in his grace and the kindness, um, that kindness of having that knowledge of him. It's grace and the kindness of God, the, lo the, the loving uh, heart that God has for his children. 
Christian life is growth. Every grace and every blessing of the gospel is in seed form, implanted into a newborn child of God. First Peter 1 and 23, it says this, having been born not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers, its flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. God's word's going to continue. He's going to continue expanding and growing. They're still discovering planets. They're still discovering uh, more solar systems out there because the light is still expanding. Just because you can't see it from where you are, but it's still expanding. James 1 and 18 of his own. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures uh, to be those of faith, seeing with faith eyes. And it's pretty much, uh, I was telling my husband, I was thinking about this on Monday, like the, the centurion. I mean, I mean, picture Jesus Christ. He's on the cross. He's uh, every blood, uh, every ounce is draining out, falling to the ground. You, he's disfigured. You, you, you can't make out his face, his form. And, and, and the, 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 the centurions there, the soldiers, they're used to this. They're, there's a they're deal, and they're, they're getting the people through, and they crucify them, and they crucify them, and they're hoping they'll die quickly and take them off. Let's put some more on there. And, and there's chaos, and there's, there's weeping, and there's yelling, and there's, there's people throwing things, and there's people you know, a, a cursing Jesus and, and the cursing these men, and there's all these things going on. But at noon, there's this, this darkness, this darkness falls, and you can't see your hand in front of you. If you've ever been in a dark cave, if you've been to Carlsbad Caverns, you know they turn off the lights about halfway down. It's so dark, you can put your hand in front of your face, and you can't see it. That's a darkness at noonday. It's so dark. And then the, you have the centurion in Matthew 27 and 54. Uh, they, they're, they're crucified. Uh, there's the darkness and then the, uh, the earthquake. When Jesus is dying, there's the earthquake, the ground shaking. And he says, truly, this was the Son of God. This was a man, whether he was saved or not, was certainly aware of what was going on around him. Do we pay attention to the signs and things that are going on? Or are we just too caught up in the turmoil? to the sound, the darkness. The darkness is going to keep getting darker. You're supposed to be the bright light getting brighter. Full light of day. Yeah, that's in the Word too. And so, uh, truly, this was the Son of God. What are we looking at? Uh, where we should be taking notice that, yes, the ground is shaking. Um, I've had one to agree with me just this week sent me an email that he can see and hear the things that are going on. Well, the, you have to do that. You have to be paying attention to what's going on. God's greatest gift to us is regeneration. His own will brought us into this new life. It's uh, his instrument, the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, Ephesians 1 and 13. Ephesians 1 and 13 says this, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, the Holy Spirit, he'll guide you. John 16, 13, Holy Spirit helps us in worship. That's John 16. 16 and 14, and then to testify, John 15 and 26. The Holy Spirit of promise was seen in Acts 2, uh, but did we readily receive the Holy Spirit of conversion, and are we relying Him on daily? Are we still uh, trying to not live by faith, but be just reliant on ourselves? Because that'll be the person who's going to be drawn away, pulled away. They're going to fall away from the grace. They're going to fall away from the grace. Uh, are we daily thinking on the promise of the Lord's return? First Corinthians 12 and 1 says this, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is, is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Pay attention how many people are actually not calling Jesus as Lord. Some don't want to mention his name at all. Remember, we're talking about people in charge. Holy Spirit, that Spirit of Grace will never drive you to uh, take wildly in compulsive acts. He will empower you with strength in your human personality, but he will never overpower what he is doing. 
Christ is glorified, manifestations of the Spirit harmonize uh, with the truth about Jesus. Uh, it's that place of faith. It's a place of faith in Jesus. It's totally reliant on Him. He brings spiritual truth, that spiritual language, 1 Corinthians 2 and 12 through verse 16. I will read from the Amplified, more words, yes. Now we have not received the Spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. Uh, and we're setting these truths forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language, those who possess the Holy Spirit. But the natural, the non-spiritual man does not accept, nor, nor, nor will he welcome it. He will not admit it into his heart, these gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit God, uh, the Spirit of God, for they are folly, that is, they're meaningless, they're nonsense to him. Uh, he's incapable of knowing them. Uh, he's incapable of progressing, re recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they're spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. You have to be born again. People born again call Jesus Lord, led by him. They are beneficiaries to the blessings of God. We receive them as we receive the Holy Spirit. The divine favor, everybody's always talking about the divine favor. You know what the divine favor is? Forgiveness. Because he forgave us first. He sent Jesus. Divine favor, forgiveness. God sent his son. Uh, he said, receive his salvation. Receive my son. Receive the divine favor. That Keeping the attitude of repentance for the grace that God gave us. Uh, is there a falling away from grace? Yes. Yes. And Peter wrote about it. No falling short of the grace. Hebrews 12, 14 through 17, he says, Pursue peace with all people in holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. I mean, it's right there. Verse 15, looking carefully, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up can cause trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward he wanted to inherit the blessing. He was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Uh, Esau lived for the moment. You have people that are trying to, to take a, a heritage that wasn't even theirs from, you know, like, what, 150 uh, to 300 years ago, and, and they weren't born into slavery, but they're, they're taking it on. That's the birthright they want. They don't want the birthright of Jesus. They want the birthright of slavery and that, so they can be a victim and, and, and get paid. It's got a price tag. It has a price tag. The gospel of grace, yes, yeah, so that root of bitterness is, is one to turn away from God in that grace. Is, is disobedience can contaminate an entire Christian community. The gospel of grace involves peace, but not at the expense of sacrificing holiness. Matthew 5 and 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Many have found themselves like Esau, who for the moment of gratification of the flesh, who forfeits the permanent spiritual blessings. Yes, once that choice is made and acted upon, its consequences cannot be uh, reversed. Is there a falling from grace? Well, unforgiveness has a price tag. Right. And people will use it as the victim card. Right. Unforgiveness. If you're Christian and, and you're going back to unforgiveness, is there a falling away? from grace. Holding on to grace, Christians should move towards peace and holiness, warning one another against falling short of that grace. Everyone should want to dwell in God's presence always. Proverbs 22 and 11, it says, he who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, it says the king will be his friend. Can you imagine if you're doing that with, with the king, what if you're speaking sweetly to Jesus daily? Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for what you did on the cross and all that you took for me. Uh, I thank you. I thank you. I, I thank you have a new life. I thank you. Ooh, I'm not that person that I used to be. 
that, that I have been changed from glory to glory, from glory to glory. This grace, it's a beauty, it's a kindness. Um, it's uh, uh, Cain numbering 2580, this grace, this beauty. It's a godly attitude, and it's one that will promote you. It will always promote you when you have this uh, attitude. A uh, genuine godly person values godly speech. The godly people will speak no lies. How many do you know they're speaking lies? Well, I can tell you a number of channels that we will, will not watch because they're speaking lies. Right. Who do you want to spend time with? A liar or with the truth? I, I, I'm going to stand with the truth. The Psalm 101 verse 6, my eyes shall be on the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Who made a man's mouth? Well, Psalm 94, 8 through 11, and this is blasphemers they're talking about, but let's read it. Uh, understand you senseless among the people and you fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who formed the eye shall he not see? In verse 10, this is a good one. He who instructs the nation shall he not correct? Yes, he does. He will correct. He who teaches man's knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are futile. God can be with our mouth and teaches. Or like from Psalm 94, the verses here speak of blasphemers who are the proud, the gloating. They're the wicked known as fools. God will instruct them and he will correct and teach uh, from his own knowledge of who he is. Not who man wants to be. We should be what God purposed for our lives. Um, Charles A. Spurgeon, from uh, his book, All of Grace, he said, I, I would do many things to please my friends, but to go to hell to please them is more than I would venture. It may be very well to do this and, and that for good fellowship, but it will never do to lose the friendship of God in order to keep on good terms with men. Grace is authority and with gentleness. Second Corinthians 13 verses 5 through 14. He says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in faith. Are we relying on God's word? Are we speaking God's word? Are we expecting God's word to, to, that we, we're going to get up in the morning and we're going to be feeling really good because we're confessing God's word over our lives? Are we reliant on, on ourselves? He says, uh, test yourselves. Do you not you know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? And unless indeed you are disqualified, well, no, you shouldn't be disqualified if Jesus is in you. Verse 6, but I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now, I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should uh, appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. Verse 8, please hear this verse 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And Jesus is in us. Yes, there was a crucifixion. To many people, it was weak. Uh, I, I myself, I may appear as weak to you, uh, but the truth is Jesus is resurrected and Jesus lives in me. Jesus is resurrected and he's in me and I'm seated in heavenly places. Verse 9, for we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. And this we also pray that you may be complete. And pay attention, he, he mentions the word complete twice in this passage. Verse 10, therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. Uh, how many people have you got to minister to and you give them a word of edification? And then they start trying to analyze it and say, well, this is for destruction. It's like, no, it's not if this is God's word, because that's what he's warning them here. He's warning them. I'm giving you God's word. I'm edifying you with the word that it's not destroying. It's an edifice. It's a building being built up. But if you're self-reliant, you're going to start taking it apart because you can't deal with it if you're 
relying on you and not living by faith. Yes, that's, that's what he is talking about in this passage. God will discipline those in whom he loves. Uh, verse 11, finally, brethren, farewell. Be complete. Yep, there, there's their second one. He says, be complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one uh, mind. Uh, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you, he says. Verse 14, that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, the communion, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This grace of the Lord uh, of Jesus Christ, this love of God is the gospel. It's a grace for all nations. It's a gentleness that's the strength of the Lord is right behavior and not someone's opinion of him or of us. And too many people are living by opinions today. Yeah, their own opinions. Uh, he mentions being uh, complete twice. Psalm 62, 11 says, God has spoken once, twice. I've heard this, that power belongs to God. We are only complete in God the Lord. That which he's mentioned now twice, verse 9, that you may be made complete in verse 11, uh, become complete. That is, be, be of the good comfort, be one mind, live in peace. The God of love and peace will be with you. This is confirmed significant that if you do these things, that as it is written, this is the edification and the change will come. But you have to rely on God for it to come to pass you can't be relying on you to change it smack <laughs> this is confirmed this is significant to continue to be changed from glory to glory not destroyed by self reliance the edification is for building resisting God's edification is resisting him it's resisting his life it's resisting his strength it's resisting his courage and it's resisting his power glory be to God forever glory be to the Lord we sing your praises and we worship you because you're God of power and might hallowed be your name the communion of the Holy Spirit Philippians 2 and 1 therefore if there is any consolation in Christ if any comfort and love any fellowship with the Spirit if any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being like minded having the same love being of one accord of one my grace Grace is the communion of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 3 and 12, therefore, as the elect of God, holy beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, and forgiving one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint to give against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. The favor of God's forgiving. He forgave us by sending us as his son, and the door is open to receive him. And he did. He, as he did it, he expects us to do it as well. That grace is granting forgiveness with an unconditional kindness. We're supposed to do it to others like, like God did for us through his son. Is there a falling from grace? Have you stepped away? Peter talks about it. Communion of the Spirit for spiritual unity. Uh, Jesus prayed this in John 17, verses 20 to 23. He says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through the word, that they all may be one as you, Father, in me, and I in you, and that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And then he says, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I and them and you and me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that you have sent me and love them as you have loved me. We're the body of believers. We're bearing the divine mission of Christ in unity. It's consummated in heaven. It's consummated because he was resurrected. He's not in the grave. The Holy Spirit reminds us of this grace that Jesus spoke, John 14, 25. He says, These things that I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We're not supposed to be afraid. We're not supposed to be afraid. Excuse me. Matthew 5 and 20. 
or uh, no, let's do John 16 and 13. It's the Holy Spirit in us helps us testify, not hide in the basement. John 16 and 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Now, Matthew 5 and 20. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. Is there a falling from grace in these days of chaos and much turmoil? We should stay in tune to the grace of God. Matthew 9, we'll read verses 35 uh, to 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages. He was teaching in their synagogues. He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He's healing every sickness and every disease among people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Do we have tears in regard to those with hardness of heart who continue in their sin, where their hearts are blind and their tragedy is death. I want to say that again. Do we have tears in regard to those with hardness of heart who continue in their sin where their hearts are blind and their tragedy is death? Compassion is in us by the Holy Spirit, amazing grace. Romans 5 and 5, and now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. It's the Holy Spirit that has been poured in our hearts. It's God's agape kind of love. If God is in you, and he should be in you, if you've received Jesus uh, born again, you should have the agape God kind of love, not the phileo. You can have that for, you know, friends, but the, the, the born again Christian should have the Holy Spirit, the God kind of love. Hope of great future blessings from him who never lies. Holy Spirit gives evidence uh, lavishly in our hearts that grace is the love of the Father and of his will. In turn, we love by choice as the Father gave us this grace. It is in his will and not our emotions that we choose life that's of worth. It's freely given as the gift or this highest good to another individual. Reading 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether or slaves or free. And I've all been made to drink into one spirit, for in, for in fact the body is not one member but many. We drink into one spirit. We drink into the Holy Spirit. We're baptized into the body of Christ by the new birth. Grace frees us, uh, uh, frees us to lo love others and as, as God so loved us, as he gave. The Holy Spirit appeared in a rushing mighty wind, Acts 2 and 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Yes. Are we giving the grace of God to others or another type of grace? Are we that salt and offer that savory and wholesomeness to others, uh, that which inhales the goodness of God and exhales by giving them out his wisdom? Are we just making noise? Are we are we soaring in the wind of the Holy Spirit? Or are we just complaining in the dust? Wow. Uh -huh. The original comes from heaven. The actual substance of him is the anointing by faith. For Jesus told us not to run after those things, uh, calling that Jesus is there. Mark 13 and 21, then if anyone says to you, he says, look, here is the Christ, or look, he is there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed. See, I've told you all things beforehand. The Holy Spirit is our guidance. Uh, he is that which speaks instruction, instruction, and he will always glorify Jesus. You don't have to be get chasing after anybody. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit in us. Our identity is in Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Romans 14 and 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Holy Spirit will tell us things to come. In closing, we are the body of believers, you and I. We've been well equipped for serving the Lord. It's truly amazing grace that's appeared. When we've seen that which will transpire in the kingdom to come, we wish further into knowing him. In being obedient in faith, 
continuing in 2021 and beyond, well aware of what is against us, but we arise. You and I must arise, and we're not to be afraid. We are the forgiving hearts with spiritual eyes to see, with hearts for God only, praying and even crying at times over what is seen, but remain faithful to touch the Father and expect His purpose on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, there's going to be opposition, and whatever that is, it's only God's grace that it's ability and empower, empowerment to complete what God has placed in our hands to to do for this day and this hour. Paul and Silas saw heaven released in a prison. Um, uh, the heavens were released, Acts 16, 25 to 26. Ezekiel heard a rushing wind in Ezekiel 3 and 12 and 13. Ezekiel prophesied unto the wind in Ezekiel 37 and 9. And Jesus talked to the wind in John 3 and 8. Effects invisible but are observed. Faith in God makes a sound and it's called grace. We have no strength but His strength. We have no power but His power. We have no life but His life. And by His blood we're saved, delivered to see that which is in Him. It is of His will. It's to His victory and it's to His praise and to His glory for us to enjoy the beneficiaries. We give thanks for this amazing grace. Amen and amen.